Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Craig Bemmett Crisp. We are about two minutes early, so we're just going to go ahead and let everybody in and um, and wait till we get started. Hello, everybody. It is now 1230. And I know a few folks are rolling in as we speak, but I'd like to be sensitive to time and go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Kelly Gallagher, and I wanted to welcome you for uh, welcome you to our second installment of our first installment of the Chris Monthly Webinar Series. Um, today is a repeat of the topic on how to view your patient's COVID-19 results through the Chris Unified Landing Page, or as most of you know it, ULP. Uh, as before, the format is going to be 20 minutes of speaker presentation and demos, followed by 10 minutes of moderated Q&A. Before we get started, just wanted to give you a few housekeeping items. Um, today's session will be recorded and the link will be shared for your reference after the fact. Presenters will be on camera, and if you'd like to see both those camera feeds and the demos at the same time, just hover at the top of your Zoom screen to make the toolbar appear, and then select View Options, and then Side-by-Side -side Mode. That'll give you the benefit of seeing the face as well as the material. We are trying to, uh, trying to get through the presentations first and address questions later, so if you have any questions as we go along, please just type them into the chat and we'll be fielding questions that way during the Q&A. And for those of you who don't speak Zoom, chat is the speech bubble icon located on the bottom toolbar. Just hover and you'll see it appear. And if we're not able to answer all of the questions during Q&A, we will we'll keep a log of that chat and then we'll follow up with answers offline. Okay, and without further ado, um, you, some of you heard a brief greeting from Craig earlier, but I'd like to formally introduce Craig Bem, who's our Maryland Executive Director for CRISP, for a welcome and opening remarks. Craig? Yeah, thanks, Cal. Hi, everybody. Um, I will be super brief because we have some really great content to get to. Um, I just want to echo Kelly and thank everybody for joining. Um, I'm really excited that we're doing this series. Uh, we got a lot of good feedback last time. And um, I think it's a really nice opportunity to give you uh, 30 minutes of content and questions and introduce some new faces to folks on our team and, um, and hopefully keep you well informed and in the loop about what we're doing. And um, as usual, if you have feedback, uh, if you have concerns about um, any of the CRISP services or the way that we're relaying the information, um, please, please reach out. We want to make sure that uh, we're serving our community as, as you all do really important work. So. Um, thank you for joining. Uh, don't hold back questions or comments uh, either during the last portion of today's webinar or offline. And, um, and we look forward to working with all of you a lot more. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much for that, Craig. Next, I would like to introduce Jeffrey Bayen. Uh, he's our Ambulatory Outreach Manager for CRISP, and he'll provide an overview and some demos on finding COVID-19 results in the ULP. Jeff?
We'll give Jeff another second to get uh, get situated there. Hello, thank you, Kelly. Um, little technical difficulty there. <laughs> uh, what I'd like to go over today is the COVID-19 um, results uh, within the Unified Landing page. There's a, a lot of different avenues on how to uh, get this information, and I want to kind of go over each individual way uh, in a little bit of detail, um, and hopefully this will, will help you um, be able to, uh, to get the results uh, in a more efficient manner. Um, First thing I wanted to go over was ENS prompt. Um, many of you use this tool all the time for many different reasons. Um, everything, um, you know, from, from doing transitional care management to uh, other initiatives. Um, and as you see here, uh, they come in, the, the uh, COVID results will come in, in the same manner, um, you know, the Twitter feed, Facebook feed type manner that everything else uh, comes through in, um, in the unified landing page. Um, if you want to uh, just see COVID results, we can do that with a simple filter ad. Um, we would just add the diagnosis description, which is right here, and make it contains, and just put the word COVID in. When we click filter, and what we would get with that filter would just be patients that tested for COVID-19. The test could be either negative or positive, um, this patient here uh, tested positive, um, and we clicked on this patient, this patient, uh, or this instance, they tested uh, negative for, for COVID. Um, you have that information there. If you find this filter useful, you can save this filter. You could call it anything you want. Um, if you want to call it COVID-19, you could save that filter, and then it'll always be here. Um, when, you, when you come back in, you could, you could go in and get the COVID-19 results. So that, that's a good way to see um, a good snapshot of um, the, uh, the results as they come in. Uh, another place to go into would be our health records, um, which you would just enter the patient's name. So if you're looking up a specific patient, you put their name, uh, first name, last name, date of birth, search for the patient, identify the patient that I'm looking for, And it'll load up here. And as you can see here, the, the result is sitting here. Now, the nice thing about the health records uh, is uh, it comes in with any of the other lab um, reports. And by hitting the print button, you could um, create a nice clean PDF file. Uh, so then that way, um, you know, it, it could be printed out, you know, if, uh, if the patient needs it for, a, you know, back to work or any of that sort of thing. Um, or if uh, you could also save it to your, your desktop and import it into uh, a patient's chart, um, you know, without actually printing it, uh, as most CHRs will, you know, accept a, a PDF file. So it gives you two pretty good options right there. And uh, they'll come in in date order. So if you have a patient that tested positive and they've tested and retested and retested, um, you'll be able to see that. You could also sort by description. Uh, if they're getting different uh, lab orders, um, you know, throughout the time um, that this has been going on, you could click description and it would sort it. So if there was more uh, COVID-19 tests here, they would all be grouped together. So that's, uh, that's another avenue to, uh, to, to look for that information. Um, another uh, great area to uh, look for that information is in the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, results filter. Now, the nice thing about this, uh, and I don't have any attributed patients uh, for this because I'm not a practice, but what we do is we would take the same patient panel that you have with, um, or the, the same uh, the patient roster that you've added to, uh, to order the COVID lab orders, and all of them will be listed here uh, along with the result when the results come in. So if you've ordered a lot of them, you could show as many entries as you want uh, and it would just come down nice and easy to read. Um, 
sort of similar to the ENS prompt that I went over first uh, um, with less information. This is going to tell you uh, the result, the result date. So uh, it'll tell you if, if a test was positive or negative. Uh, if you wanted to do a deeper dive or if a patient needed the, uh, the positive or negative result, you know, like I said, for employment, for, you know, or any other reason, travel, you would, you would go into the health records, um, grab that information and move forward. Um, just like I mentioned before. So those are the, uh, um, the, the, the things, uh, to get that information, uh, available. Did, and that's really it in a nutshell uh, as far as getting the, the COVID results. Did anybody have any questions? So, hey, Jeff, this is Kelly. We did have uh, a couple of folks uh, put some questions into the chat. So the first one from Dr. Ghosh is, how do you print a result? Okay, so that's, that's a great question. Uh, that comes up all the time. So as far as printing the result, um, you would go into the patient health records uh, and click on the result. And then there's a little print tab over here. When you print, hit the print tab, um, it, it pulls up a PDF file. Now, um, you could do a couple of things with this. If you want to actually physically print it, you would just, you would click print um, and print it just like any other sort of file. So you could do that. Um, the other thing you could do as well uh, is you could download it. And if you want to download it onto your desktop per se, or, or to a certain file that you're going to upload into your chart, you could, you could pull it through there. So those are the two options really. So you'd be able to print it um, by clicking the print tab, or you can download, um, you know, depending on how you want to, um, you know, digest that file and, and have it printed out. Okay, great. Thanks, Jeff. Um, and we'll, we'll go ahead and hit a few more before moving on to our next session, and then we'll save the remainder of them for the, uh, the designated Q&A. So I also have, um, oh, they're coming in quick. <laughs> All right, uh, from Teresa McLaughlin, sometimes I receive COVID-19 results on one record, but not the other. For example, she can search the records, uh, the results in patient health record, but they're not in ENS prompt or the COVID-19 results viewer. Um, when does this happen? How can we ensure that they appear on both items or multiple platforms? So the uh, the health records uh, view uh, that that'll that'll pretty much get it for anybody. Uh, the ENS prompt it has to be one of your attributed patients on your patient panel. Got it. So that's that's where that can come from. Um, so if the patient um, you know is relatively new or you haven't seen them in a long time and for whatever reason they're not on your the patient panel that you've submitted to us, um, they're not they're not going to post there. So that's where the disconnect can be. Um, and we could we could up you know if you wanted to upgrade your panel um, you know to to something more current um, that'll help with that. Okay, great. And let's see, we have. We, uh, someone was having a, a problem clicking the filter cone, nothing happens. Okay, so when you're doing the ENS prompt filter, um, you would go in and click, uh, like I said, for this one, it would be a diagnosis description. And then you have to add a controller, which would be contains, and you'd put COVID in, hit enter. And that should do the filter. Now, if you wanted to save that filter, like I said, in this little tab down here, you can name it anything you want um, and save it. And it'll go into this, this slot over here. And these are demos I've done over time, but um, you, would, you would be able to see that information um, right there. And you could just click on it at any time and, and get that. Okay, great. And uh, we'll, we'll take one more before moving on to our next presenter. Um, someone's a practice manager. Uh, this is Joni Eng to everybody. Um, if I'm a practice manager and wanted to see the results for COVID orders placed by all my providers, for example, if they have four providers, how would a person access that? So there's uh, two different avenues. Uh, if the patient panel's up to date, ENS prompt, we'll, we'll have all the information coming through. Um, Another good spot would be the, uh, the COVID results viewer. So the COVID results viewer, um, like I said, this isn't populated because I'm not a provider, uh, but if I 
was a, a practice and I had uh, um, in my practice order to uh, all these results, uh, that information um, would be listed there. Okay, great. All right, folks, and, and with that, uh, Jeff will be around for questions uh, following our next presenter, but I would like to move on in the agenda. <clears throat> so thank you very much, Jeff. I'm sure we'll be speaking with you momentarily. Thank you. Okay, and folks, as a reminder, keep those uh, questions in the chat coming. We will address as many as we possibly can during our allotted time. All right, last but not least, I would like to introduce Dr. Sheena Patel, who is our Director of Provider Relations, and she'll briefly discuss CRISP's latest application in detail, which is the COVID-19 results viewer. Sheena, take it away. Hi, Kelly, can you hear me? We can, thanks. Yep. So I actually think Jeff reviewed the COVID-19 results viewer. Um, he did. I didn't know if you had anything more groundbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> no, just that we're, we are working through um, a lot of uh, enhancements. Um, we did hear some, you know, feedback from all of you as we did release the, the tool. Um, and so we are working on making printing a capability right from the results viewer. Um, you know, and then we're, we're kind of cleaning up um, the result date and where that's pulling from. Um, I'm sure you all are familiar when you get a lab result, there's multiple dates um, listed on that lab form, you know, a collection date, an observation date, result date. Um, so we're making sure that all of those kind of line up and are, are appropriately, you know, pulling the actual result date. Um, so just kind of a couple things that are coming down the pipe there. Okay, wonderful. That is, uh, that is really interesting stuff. And I know it'll help uh, viewing these results, making these results even easier to view and manipulate um, for our purposes. So thank you very much for that information. More to come there. Okay, and with, uh, and with that, let's go right back to the questions. We've had a few more come in. So from Susan Miles, is this feature something that a delegated person with their own CRISP login can access, or is it just a physician or a specific role? I can take that one. This is Sheena. Okay. Um, so uh, today, um, it is only a tab that the uh, that a prescriber um, would be able to view. We are working on a strategy, um, hopefully just in the next couple of days here, um, to release um, the ability to order and therefore view um, COVID results um, for delegated users. Um, so we're hoping, like I said, to have that out in the next couple of days. Okay, great. Okay, from Roger Stone. Uh, Jeff, this one came in under your, uh, your demo view. Um, can you clarify the difference between the no patient COVID-19 tab and the other one? Yes, so the, uh, the no patient COVID-19 tab would be for a patient that you do not have in, uh, in CRISP per se or your, your patient panel. If you click the COVID-19 lab order, not the no patient one, but the COVID-19 lab order, um, it would be a patient that you've already um, queried into CRISP. Um, and things are pre, most things are pre-populated. Um, so that, that's, that's the main difference uh, there um, with those two. Okay, perfect. Okay, our next question, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the the COVID-19 viewer from Uma Murthy, the COVID-19 viewer does not show any updates. Um, she, she's reported sending patients for the test, but the system still shows uh, zero patients. Doesn't appear to be working for her. Is, is that uh, a common problem that we've had reported or is it something we should follow up with offline? It's, uh, if it's something, yeah, if you, if you don't see the patients, um, if it's showing zero, please uh, let me know and uh, reach out to myself or Sheena and we can research that. Okay, Uma, uh, if uh, you're listening, we definitely have uh, that information available for you, so I can make sure you have the contact information to report that issue. Okay, Valerie Alexander is uh, saying that we do not have the tab for ENS prompt when we log in. Does that, uh, do you know, no subscription or? Yes, um, 
I'd, I'd have to look at that practice. Uh, there's there's different levels of access uh, through CRISP uh, okay. depending on what you've signed up for. And uh, um, I, myself or somebody on my team can take care of that. Okay, great. I'll flag this one for follow-up too. Okay, Nadia Omase. The portal for both doctors, uh, both doctors have waitlist tabs than what I see on your presentation. They cannot see any health records, tabs, et cetera. That circles back to the same thing. The um, same thing, okay. Uh -huh. Different levels just, of access. Uh-huh. Okay, great. All right, Nadia, we will follow up with you there. All right, from Calvin Ho. I've had COVID tests on ENS prompt, but they do not appear in the health record. So again, Jeff, would, would you mind uh, explaining why that might be just for everyone's benefit? Health records, um, COVID tests on ENS prompt, but not appearing in health record. Um, this is Sheena. I can I can try to take a stab at oh, that great. one. Um, so I, I think the most likely um, is that it's it's um, a patient match um, issue, and so if the demographics were slightly different, um, I could imagine that either health records created like a new patient record, um, or um, you know something happened with the rendering of the result into health records. Um, but that's really good feedback. If you can send us examples. Um, you know, we can look into those particular ones and see if we can notice a pattern um, and that'll help us kind of troubleshoot overall. Okay, great. Thanks, Sheena. So Calvin, yeah, just reach out to us with those examples and we'll look into that. Um, Roger Stone, what is the high end delay time CRISP staff have heard between when one lab is done and the results are available or emailed from CRISP? Um, so generally, uh, the so essentially the way that we get results is through the Maryland um, NEDS feed, which is their like reportable conditions um, feed. Um, so we have a direct connection with that and all of the labs report out to NEDS and then NEDS sends us the results. Um, generally, um, by the time the lab is done, um, it, it does vary slightly depending on the lab. Some labs have a real time reporting mechanism out to NEDS and therefore CRISP gets those results within, you know, a couple of hours. Um, others do like a nightly drop of all of their results for that particular day into NEDS. And so then CRISP would get them, you know, shortly thereafter. Um, but I, you know, I wouldn't expect anything longer than um, 24 hours after the lab has, has gotten that result. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Okay, um, next one is from Megan Brady. Uh, I'm a nurse practitioner and I do not have the tabs Jeff displayed. I have no health records tabs, ENS, et cetera. Um, again, might tie to access. Can yes, someone, it, okay. Yes, it is. So if, uh, if you could reach out to me, um, we could look into getting your practice signed up for more services. Okay, sign up. Okay, next question is uh, Joni Eng. Are there plans to have results automatically interface with e EHR systems uh, such as Epic or, or Cerner or others? Sheena, Hello. Jeff, is that on the roadmap anywhere, integration with the EHRs? Yeah, so this, actually this is Craig. I will, um, I will try and do this one. Um, the the results are being delivered into Epic systems currently. Um, we have a number of hospitals who did a direct kind of lab connection with us. Um, so they're being delivered and resulted like other labs within the Epic ecosystem. Um, that's kind of hospital by hospital if they've taken advantage of that. For uh, Cerner, I don't believe we have any Cerner hospitals who've done that, although I don't see why we couldn't do it if there was an interested group. And then um, Meditech, the other system used by most hospitals, um, tends to be more difficult to integrate with. Um, also in Cerner and Epic, there is the CRISP in context app that automatically you know, queries CRISP and displays information for patients. And the results would be uh, included in that app as well. Okay, great. Okay, on to our uh, next question. Um, 
Another from Jody Eng. Do providers, uh, NPs, PAs, and MDs just need to request access to the ENS Prompt and COVID-19 Results tab if they don't have it? Uh, what is needed to grant access? Uh, so uh, in order to get that, you'd have to uh, sign a participation mm -hmm. agreement with us and, um, you know, this, and um, we would uh, work on getting your practice up and running. Um, if you wanted to reach out to us, we could certainly help with that. Gotcha. Thanks, Jeff. And uh, probably a similar question from Shonda Brown. Um, I don't have ENS prompt. Uh, what do I need to do? So this probably sounds like another onboarding question. Correct? Yes. Uh, yes. And uh, if, if you wanted to uh, you shoot me an email and uh, either myself or uh, the appropriate team member in your geographic area will uh, assist you in getting you set up. Great. Thanks for that. Okay, Joni, um, Joni Eng again, we have noticed that when patients go to specific VEEP stations, the results are not in CRISP for weeks. Who do we contact when that happens? Um, I can take that one. So I would suggest reaching out to the local health department um, for the county that the VEEP station is in um, and also contacting CRISP support. You know, if it's a technical issue where there's something broken, um, like I said, we get the results from Maryland NEDS. Um, and so it's likely that if they're not, if you're not seeing them in CRISP, something happened with reporting them to NEDS. Um, and so the health department is probably the best place to start. Um, and we can, um, you know, we can work with them then to, to troubleshoot in there and um, narrow down to what's going on. Great. Thanks, Sheena. Okay. And I think... That was actually our last question, except for Jeff, I'm going to ask you to, to do a favor for me. Would you mind just sharing your email address uh, and uh, main, contact, main contact number uh, for everyone on chat so they can reach out to you when they have a chance? And then you could uh, put them in touch with the other, other folks as needed. Oh, there we go. That was quick. Okay, so uh, do we have any other questions? Okay, great. Roger Stone, for individuals in a practice who do not have an ENS tab yet, but someone else in the practice does, uh, it was his experience that it, can be, uh, that it can be added to the requesting new person with the permission of a lead permitter. Is this, is this accurate? Sort of like a delegation? I'm sorry, could you repeat, repeat the question? Oh, sure, sure, no problem. Uh, for Roger Stone, uh, for individuals in a practice who do not have ENS tab yet, but someone else in the practice does, so it looks like they already have the panel. Um, Roger was stating that uh, it was his experience that uh, it can be added to the requesting new person with the permission of a lead permitter. So it sounds like a delegation to me, is that possible? Uh, not to my knowledge. Uh, typically, it's just the provider that has access to order that. Okay. So, so Roger, if, if you can, just shoot Jeff a note offline uh, with a little bit more detail so we can go ahead and look into the, uh, what, what you might have been experiencing. Okay. Jeff's corrected email address is up there. Great. Okay. Do we have any other questions? I know we're getting short on time, but we uh, definitely want to make sure we get you the answers that you need. Hey, Kelly, Paul Glykoff here. Oh, hey, Paul. Um, hey, Jeff, can you take a moment for these folks, if there are many folks on the call who are perhaps registered just by, via, by PDMP, explain to them the difference of moving from PDMP to executing a participation agreement so that they can get a broader range of services? Excellent yes, point. Yes, definitely. Um, so yeah, if you are at a, a PD, PDMP only situation, um, that's more than likely why you do not have access to health records, ENS prompt, and some of the other tools that I displayed, patient snapshots, so on and so forth. Um, the next level for that would be to, uh, to sign a participation agreement with us. Uh, there's a little bit of other documentation uh, that's involved there and submit a patient panel um, which is basically a roster of patients from the last 18 months or so um, to us. And from that, we can build a, uh, the ENS prompt where you'd be able to see patient data and not just for COVID, uh, you'll get to see any sort of encounter information uh, that happened at any hospital in Maryland, DC or West Virginia. 
and uh, and and go from there. Um, the process is uh, um, free on our end, and it's uh, it's 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 fairly painless, and um, we do most of the work on it. And uh, um, like I said, our team would be happy to uh, to help you get signed up for it. And uh, I put my uh, email as well as my phone number on there. Um, and if if you have any uh, questions that you'd like to uh, like to sign up, uh, don't hesitate to shoot me an email and um, we'll work on getting your practice set up. Wonderful. Thanks, Jeff. And, and thank you again, Paul, for that great, uh, that great point to tie in. I'm, I'm sure a lot of folks found that beneficial. Um, well, folks, if there are no other questions, oh, wait, hang on. Joanne, uh, please forgive me if I mispronounce this. Joanne Meikle, will you be adding Delaware DIN to PDMP? That's a good question. Craig or Sheena? Yeah, so this we is... do have um, a, go ahead, Craig. No, go ahead, Sheena. <laughs> I was just gonna say, um, so we are connected to the Delaware um, PDMP through our interstate connections. Um, so if you're looking at PDMP and you look at, and you have the interstate option um, enabled, um, you will be able to see the Delaware PDMP, um, but we don't report for Delaware, so it's not kind of part of our PDMP, if that makes sense. It's not. Okay, great question, and thanks for that distinction. <laughs> Okay, folks, uh, with that, we are just about at time. So if you have other questions, please don't hesitate to email, uh, particularly Jeff offline, but he's got a whole team he can loop in to help and make sure that uh, we address your questions in a timely manner. So don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we, we will be uh, sending a link to the, uh, excuse me, today's session today. Um, we did record it and we'll also uh, be interested in any other feedback you have on today's presentations or topics for future presentations from, uh, from you as our users in the community. So again, heartfelt thanks for joining us today and we hope you can join us for another session in the future. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks. Have Thanks, a great everyone. day, everybody.